Hello, good morning everybody. Uh, we're back uh, for our quarterly earnings release, uh, second quarter 2023. We saw a strong underlying performance on higher patient count and improved case, case mix. Looking at the headline numbers with MFIS, the hyperinflation accounting uh, uh, records included, our revenue increased 7% year over year. The group saw more patients accompanied with higher revenue intensity. EBITDA is up 3%, mainly on the higher revenue. Now, net income was down 51% year over year. Sounds uh, rather gruesome. Uh, in fact, it is not at all. Uh, it's compared to a very, very strong Q2 2022, where we had a lot of special one-time items, exceptional items. Uh, some FX gains that we had recorded, gains from the hyperinflation accounting, so not really super comparable. So if we exclude the MFAS 129 uh, effects, then our revenue stands at 5.1 billion, that's up 18% growth with 1.1 billion EBITDA, that's up 10% in EBITDA, amazing operational number. We also saw double-digit top-line growth in every single of our markets. Singapore is up 10%, Malaysia 19% from a year ago, Turkey and Europe 40% up, India 11%. For the labs, we've grown 13% excluding the COVID effect. So the underlying business in our labs and in all our operations is very, very strong. We see patients coming into our healthcare facilities, great, great operational performance. Thanks to everyone out there serving at the front line day by day. All our major segments delivered outstanding operational performance. Hong Kong, in fact, uh, we're super happy to report Glen Eagles Hong Kong has achieved EBIT positive since March. Well ahead of plans, we had a anticipated EBIT positive to be more towards the end of the year. We have now in the first half year already achieved this uh, milestone. EBITDA margin is above 15%. Uh, really great thanks to Kenneth and his team uh, for really pushing the boundaries on our Hong Kong uh, operations. So first takeaway, great performance in Q2 2023, 18% revenue growth, 10% EBITDA growth, uh, great starting position for the second half of the year and we already have some good news in the running month, July, August has started uh, uh, really well, so we are on track for an improving second half. Now takeaway number two for this quarter, we have declared together with the board of directors a interim dividend of 3.5 cent per share. Uh, as you're aware, we've recently started a dividend enhancement strategy two or three years ago. We really looked at enhancing and strengthening dividend yield for uh, our stock. Uh, we've nearly doubled our dividend payout. We've also distributed the complete capital gains from the sale of our IMU uh, University to shareholders in June. And now we've implemented this interim half yearly dividend payout strategy. We believe that our shareholders should have a right to participate in the very strong cash generation of IHH. Third takeaway for this quarter is growth. Growth remains a key focus area going forward. We are talking about growth since quite a while and we've now furthered our plans to expand the bed capacity by 25%, adding close to 3,000 new beds organically in our existing footprint across Malaysia, India, Turkey, Europe over the next three years. Inorganically, we're looking for earnings and creative opportunities to acquire assets. Recently, as you may have seen, we've signed an agreement to acquire Timberland Medical Center in Kuching, Sarawak. We're building a 200-bed hospital in this location. We're investing around 400 million ringgit uh, uh, into this. The completion uh, is around 2026. So Malaysia is an important growth market for us, not only being our home market, will strengthen 
our footprint and East Malaysia with this acquisition will be one of the clusters that you should watch out for growth. So in summary, firstly, there's a very strong underlying demand for good quality healthcare, and that remains very strong. The momentum was positive in Q2, and we continue to see an upward trend both in volumes and in intensity in the second half of 2023. Secondly, we're confident of our growth. We're looking to expand our bed capacity by 25% organically based on our 12, 13,000 active beds that we have today. That's a real massive expansion over the next couple of years. Thirdly, I want to assure you our ROE enhancement path is fully intact and it continues to be an extremely important focus for all of us, enhancing, expanding profitability and return on equity. The two digits ROE is something we clearly have in mind and we do want to achieve this. To conclude, the group expects continued revenue and ROE growth will remain a tight rein on cost, we leverage on operational synergies and mitigate inflationary and interest rate pressures. Thanks a lot. I look forward to speaking to you again in the next quarter.